Hey guys, it's Monica Brandt here and I am your host for the Monica Brandt show and I am so excited about my interview today and I am joined on the show today with the lovely IFBB figure superstar Wendy Fortino who also yay hi Wendy gorgeous girl <laughs> thank you thank you for joining me today I'm so excited as always to have you on and just to have you in involved in these shows is such a treat and I know today's going to be a special interview for me but I think for you too because you're really going to enjoy getting to know our guest and just to find out who she is and why she's important and not just in my life, but in the industry overall, you know, I always like to bring in the legendary athletes. So I'm excited to have her on. Yeah. Well, I mean, as you know, my whole entire career started after watching your uh, Secrets of Beauty. So <laughs> I remember her in that. <laughs> I don't even think I think it was a VHS <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember her and we were talking a little bit about that. So um, I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so cool. So cool. So fun how things come back around right after all the years and earlier in life, you don't realize that they may come back around and here, you know, things come back around for you. It's kind of so awesome. so interesting. Right. So um, to start off the show, I found a fun little um, email that came across from one of our show sponsors, Legendary Foods. And they put a question out and I thought I would ask you, see if you knew the answer. Cause I didn't, um, are you ready for, um, a potential trick question, <laughs> which has more um, neck vertebrae, human or giraffe? I feel like this is a, obviously a trick question, but then it may be, the question is gonna is trying to make you think it's a trick question. So they're doing like reverse psychology. <laughs> this is why this is five, a weird question. Because four, the obvious answer is three, giraffe. Two, but the one human. Human. <laughs> You're cute. You did both. <laughs> okay. The answer is it's exactly the same. Isn't that crazy? They, well, they then just, you did it. Oh man. Okay. I know. Right. I know. Crazy. I just thought it was so cute. And you know, legendary foods um just had something that came across that was fun. And of course, they're sponsors. So I thought it'd be really fun to share with you. But they said what what they said is that um seven vertebrae and there are um one vertebrae could be up to eight inches long. And oh. and they said with all of them in included, I'm talking about the giraffe, obviously. Um, weighing, <laughs> weighing almost 600 pounds for just the vertebrae. Isn't that crazy? So yeah. is this like a precursor to like what their next pop tart is going to be? Is it going to be like a giraffe like a giraffe inspired <laughs> color scheme pop tart, like pumpkin spice giraffe latte color? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Now I think it was just really to get you intrigued with their email because you know. That's it. That's what I'm thinking. But I know they have some new stuff coming out in January that we're going to be evolved in. So I'm excited about that. And so awesome. what do you think? Should we, should we bring our guest in after I introduce her? Yes. Excited? Okay. So this awesome woman is not only one of the top IFBB celebrity bodybuilders from back in the day when I was competing and we met um, actually at the gym with the same choreographer. But um, she's an author, she's a master personal trainer and nutritionist. She actually coaches other nutrition coaches. She's a mentor to them. She has um, 30, almost 30 years of being in this industry. So she's got a wealth of knowledge. And every time I talk to her, I learn something very um, important for health. And, um, you know, when I was getting ready for my show, the Fitness Olympia with actually, um, I should feel like I should cut some of this off and send it to her because <laughs> Joanne was my uh, my personal trainer when I was getting ready for the 1998 Fitness Olympia, and she's become a very dear friend to me. And gosh, I've, we've known each other for over 20 years now. It's just kind of crazy. So, Wendy, will you please help me welcome Joanne Lee Cornish to the Monica Brandt Show? Yay! There she is. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hi, Hi. <laughs> we have been friends that long. It's a long time. I know it's like 24 awesome. years. It is. Isn't that's that crazy? so awesome. 
in some ways it feels like it in other times in other ways it doesn't huh and, right you know it's uh, we've gone through so many chapters together you know i know you know yeah. wendy uh, one of the things that i loved about what joanne I don't know. How, no, I don't want to say that because it's just it's very it's a very small thing that Joanne did, but it stuck with me for a very long time, obviously, because I use it to today. But Joanne used to call me or text me and she'll still do that from time to time. But it'll be a hey, Mo, it's Joe, just a high message. And that's uh, all she would say. It's yeah. just a high message. Like it kind of chokes me up. I don't I don't remember who I was talking to. And it might have been Victor Martinez recently on one of the uh, my shows recently, um, talking to him and, or it was, I can't remember if it was him or somebody right before him. It was a male bodybuilder though. And yeah. we're, we're yeah. discussing this, this trait that she would do. And it just stuck with me. And so I use that from time to time when I'm thinking about somebody and like, it's just a high message. And of it's course, yeah. yeah. And then of course it would come across in Joanne's beautiful. <laughs> 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 It's a simple thing in life. It's so easy. You know? Oh, it's so easy to do. You know, every flipping platform you can People do. People won't realize and that. Just, take a second. Make somebody smile. Take a second. And you know what it is? It's because in that moment, just knowing that you were thinking of her, that is what means so much. It's it's like you could be thinking about anything in that moment, but you were thinking about her. And so just saying hi, let her know that. Yeah. It was nice. And the other thing that stuck with me, Joanne. Uh, oh, I think I know what this is. What? I think I know what this is. <laughs> Teresa, little number. Well, exactly. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> when Monica would be training and we'd be doing, you know, the way to be heavy, I'd be like, three's a little number, Mo. We just got to get three. <laughs> just three. Three's <laughs> a little number. Three's a little number. And, it's like Ronnie Coleman's lightweight, lightweight. Yeah. It's like three's a little number. Lightweight, baby. <laughs> Three's a little number. Joanne was always yeah. so thoughtful about just reminding me. I, just three more, but mind you, it was like after we had done fifty reps or whatever, and then. <laughs> three but more. it was also when you were doing fitness mo. Um, it was also with the gymnastics, and your wrists were crushed. Your your neck. I remember I'd have to hold your neck on some exercises when she was doing back. I just held her head because she had just wow. her wrists, and so I'd be like, it's "Just three more, mo. Just three more." Because <laughs> yeah, I remember your neck especially, and then your wrist were wow. just the pounding yeah. they got for that sort of competition, right? Right. It well, wasn't just the lifting weights. I mean, it was the gymnastics yeah. however many times a week. Um, well, I think what happened, and just for anyone tuning in, and I know <coughs> you've kind of followed this before, but Joanne and I met um, right after one of the Olympias, which we'll talk more about. And then when I was prepping for the 98 Olympia, I was like, Joe, will you work with me? Please train me on, I specifically asked for back and legs. Um, Cause I, and of course- I'm so excited to hear about this whole story. I just tell me all of it. <laughs> tell, me all, <laughs> tell me all of it. Yeah, so it was like back and legs. And then of course I had the gymnastics and you know, as you're a previous uh, gymnast. So you understand that. But you know, when we first started doing all the fitness i wasn't on spring floors like i yeah. was doing all of my stuff from either the you know well i grew up doing it just out in the dirt and the grass <laughs> outside and then it was like all you know it was hard hardwood floors because i was practicing for the most part just in people don't uh, realize how hard that is in the gym in like in the gym um fitness or you know fitness room so it was all that hardwood floors so i was doing everything in there and now the you know, just to practice on those floors time after time after time. And then I finally got into working with a gymnastics coach. So I was able to utilize spring floor, but you know, that's after many years of being on the hard floor. So yeah, my wrist always hurt and my neck. And anyways, Joanne was always so thoughtful of <laughs> working with <coughs> my issues and I'd be like a little tear coming down or maybe more. <laughs> There's a few tears sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But, I have this picture of Monica with like a tear going down, Joanne pulling her neck. Three more! Three more! You no, know, my memory, I think the only time is, I think we trained one time, Mo, and it was like four o'clock in the morning. It was like four o'clock in the morning. And <clears throat> we packed, excuse me, Mike, I've got sinus, if I sound a little bit. Oh. Um, and Mo had, a, Monica had her, her book, a schedule. We all had, you know, our diaries. We didn't have our phones to put our appointments in. And she opened it and it was full. I mean, it was just full. <laughs> and she was trying to book another appointment and I think you were two weeks out from a show or something like it was four o'clock in the morning and she just cried I'm like I would cry too look at I mean it's just like I could see every moment of the day because you're a big scheduler right Mo? 
every moment of the day was taken up every moment <laughs> and she was trying to work something else in there and it was just no space and it was oh just goodness. early in the morning and it was like pre-competition <laughs> yeah. and that's when I saw you cry yeah. <laughs> man oh, you're yeah. defeated this is like yeah. it just makes it even like more crazy right. like the emotions well, are already high and then take your food out of the equation and the emotions are just like <laughs> well it's, it's it's definitely something all of all of us understand and know about and you know joanne is you know speaking on uh years of experience herself obviously so do you still schedule like that do you still i, I bet you do huh well, yes she does she does yeah <laughs> it is and you know now i've got uh, i do a lot with brad out at the barn so as you know with horses that's just you know sometimes i'm out there i'll ride up to six horses in a time period which you know we're training horses so it's you know yeah it's it's just different but um but yeah the the schedule is usually pretty busy and full i'm a scheduler i do like schedule yeah. we're i you know all three of us are very similar obviously i know wendy pretty well and you know we're all big on having that schedule and really booking it up <laughs> And we're all married. Yeah. You know, to be <clears throat> fair, <throat> though, having being where you were at that time, you probably experienced on a level that most that most people never experience it. I mean, you were a hot commodity. I mean, having people pull you in every different direction, like I don't know, I don't hot know if commodity. I can handle that. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. Like, like, too, too overwhelming. Oh, you're sweet. Well, you know what? I, Let's get off me because all of that. Because there's so many great things I want to talk. We want to talk about uh, talk about to Joanne. And like I said earlier, every time I talk to Joanne, I mean, obviously we get to catch up and all that. But I always learn something from her too. Like she's just got so much information and she loves to share. But she has all the experience of, you know, about 30 years worth of experience to back it all up. And she's, you know, she just uh, loves people and loves what she does. So I want to, you know, dive into that a little bit more. Um, so Joanne, why don't you share with, uh, I'll say with Wendy <laughs> and everyone that's going to be tuning in <coughs> later, um, would you share with us about your, you know, how you grew up, um, where you grew up, because obviously now you live in Idaho, but there's been a big path to get there right mm -hmm. kind of crazy mm -hmm. and then um yeah so who were you growing up in <coughs> and all of those great questions so the, the the accent doesn't give me away so i'm english I, I was born in the northeast of england and um at school i was a i was a sprinter so i did 100 200 meters i was really bad at hurdles but something sometimes i did them i did high jump so i was training um for my athletics and then they wanted me to get stronger. So I started training in this gym, this, this athletic stadium by myself. I remember I was, I was 14 years old on the leg press, didn't know what I was doing. And so that's when I started lifting weights. And then, um, so athletics are athletics. There's a whole story there. But um, so then I changed gyms and I go to this different gym, um, just local gym, walk in. And the guy that owned it, a guy called Bill Boyd, I didn't know it, but he was a bodybuilding judge. And so he was actually judged the Olympia. And six months later, I was 17 years old and I end up on stage. And I mean, I don't even know what this sport is, right? And I'm like, here's some music, here's a bikini. I'm like, okay. And so my first competition, I'm thinking, I really didn't know what I was doing. I, I must be so courageous. I wasn't nervous at all, I remember that. And I remember thinking, and I'm a junior because I'm only 17. And I'm thinking, you know, I'll just I'll just watch the person that goes on before me and I'll just copy whatever they do, I'm just gonna copy them. That's what I thought. And anyway, I was number two. So then I started panicking because I only had one person to watch. So I'm backstage watching this girl, trying to see what she's doing, so I could go on and copy her. Anyway, won that show. <laughs> Anyways, I won that show. <laughs> won that show, felt pretty good. But um, so yeah, that's so I got into it at a very early age, but I didn't know anything about the sport it was just because of the, the the guy that owned the gym and um, what what years was was that joanne because it kind of takes people back to you know you know like wendy can appreciate how many years back you know because she's been in the business what 10 12 oh my gosh from 2008 2008 so, so. we go way back wendy 14 we're going years back. 14 i think that's the first show i'm 54 the show it was 1983 or 1984 yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. 
so there, I mean, obviously no internet, you didn't, I mean, it's, would, were you even able to see any <clears throat> magazines at, back then? Like, had you seen any yes. magazines or that kind of? No, 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 when I competed for the first time. Okay, but both of you ladies, really fast. What was the first year that women's bodybuilding started? Was it 80, 81? Rachel McLeish, 80. I think I was just a few years in. Yeah, probably. Okay, because I was going to say, you had yeah, your career I was right at the beginning. around yeah. where it was the beginning of women's bodybuilding as yeah. we know it. Yeah, mm -hmm. with, with pretty exciting. Many icons in the sport, crazy. And so I, you see, you know, you watch the sport progress as well yeah. and how it's changed and morphed. And, 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 you know, it's changed a lot. But the one thing that I love is that it's so fashionable now that women yeah. want to be strong. So when I started training, when I first started competing, that gym had women's days and men's days. So men could, yeah, women could go in the gym Monday and Tuesday, Mondays, and, sorry, Mondays and Wednesdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah, and Saturday morning, but they had to leave by eleven o'clock. <laughs> so when I, they only had one changing room. So when I started oh, like, win, no. winning shows and things, <laughs> like, okay, you can come in on the men's days, but you can't come in till seven p.m. Seriously, seriously. That's what That's it crazy. Nobody did it. <laughs> Is that crazy? That's <laughs> like insanity. <clears throat> So to see it now and how popular it is and how women just get strong, and I just love that. I have a feeling there's a lot of women who have something to say about that now. Right? You know, instead of like going for the thigh gap or being as skinny, it's like, I love it. I love it. I love it. And you can be any type of strong. You know, you can be competition strong. You can be, you know, you can be performance strong. I love it. Anyway. So, so yes, I was 83, 84, probably now. Well, okay, I want you to t t uh, tap in a little bit about your track background because you know, obviously, about mine. Mm -hmm. And Wendy also is a sprinter. Oh, yeah, we oh. all have the same. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> share, share about that because don't don't uh, gloss over the track piece because that's a big, I think, a big part of success. Well, I loved it, Monica, but it's, I, don't, I don't mention it because it's kind of a sad story and it still kind of bothers me to a part. So I was young, so I was competing... 30, 40, into, into my early teens, like 16, 17, things like this. And so I was under the age of 21, right? So <clears throat> back then, so I was running for the, the county in England, and um, you had the under 21s, which I was in, and the, the times I was running, I was placing some of them I'd win, some of them I'd place, but I was doing pretty well, right? Um, but then you had the over 21 girls who obviously were way more experienced, and they were just, you know, obviously getting timed. So what they started to do, and it still bothers me to this day, that they, um, the, the team, because it was all about the team, they changed names. And they had another girl under run under my name. So they got a girl that was 21. It still bothers me. I'm 54. They took the girl that was in the over 21s and they put her in the under 21s to compete as Joanne Lee because they knew she'd be guaranteed to win. And then she'd get the maximum point. I would have to run in the over 21s and I still placed or some, I'm still running times that would have won me my own race. And they did that a few times. And um, so then I, I, can, I can picture it and I'm standing there and I'm watching so this girl. Mad. All right, I'm watching this girl get this trophy. Joanne Lee wins the gold at the 100. And it's a time that maybe I could have even done. And, um, ah. and you know, you, you do that to a young girl. I'm done, I'm done, I quit. So I didn't, I didn't compete up to the age of... What about the girl I, who didn't get to run under her own name? How is that fun for her to be a bunch of girls that are younger than her, that she should be already... That's crazy. And this wasn't like a little local level. This was like interstate, type, wow. like in England, interstate. Wow. Music, the big shows. So if I, so uh, then she went on to qualify and probably go to Crystal Palace and, and run under my... I mean, it was nonsense. So that's when it was 16. I, th I was probably, yeah, 17. Um, yeah, I was probably 17 then. And you know, you're practicing in the rain in England. Yeah. And I'm like, it wasn't really that fun. And I'm, I'm, but I'm pretty good at it. And so that's why I went to look for a different gym because I wanted you to. You know what? That would make a really good Netflix special. We should reach out to them. I hope that doesn't go on. <laughs> I don't hope that still doesn't go on anymore. But that's that's why I, I quit. I've had we it can anymore. track down um, the people that did that to you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be interesting to actually just have a conversation with the girl that ended up having? Why don't. Wow, Joanne, I had never, I haven't, I don't remember mm. if you told me that story and I've forgotten, not. but. I still get upset about it. I still get I would be curious. No, I don't, because every door that you go through is for a reason. I right? want so, a rematch. 
It's like, <laughs> you know, I was running at times. And again, you take a young girl like that. So say I was 16. And that's really you know, disillusioning yeah. for us to watch that. And like, this is what the sport's yeah. about. I would be interested to know, though, how that affected her psychology, to be honest. Can you imagine, you know, you're accomplishing all of these things, but it's not under your name? I mean, I would well, be... She was probably pushed into it as well. You know, at the time, she was right. probably 21, 22. She was a young yeah. lady. And the team captain's telling us to do it. I mean, we didn't have any sense. We didn't have any choice. She couldn't say no. I mean, yeah. So that's a very that interesting, interesting story. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that I mean, would cause a lot of... And, you know, that's that age range is right around, like... I mean, I... I kept competing in track a little after college, but really, I mean, in the mid twenties is when your body, like as a top level track athlete, you're, you're, especially as a sprinter, I mean, your body's pretty beat up by the time you reach your mid twenties. So there wasn't like a long, like career after, I mean, there's like a good, like five year plus window where you're mm -hmm. peaking your body in track. So yeah, let me have my 15 minutes of fame. Right. And, and right. But, uh, yeah. And I'm yeah. sure it wasn't just me. Um, I don't know right. if it's anybody else. I don't know if it was just me, but that's what happened with that. That's crazy. Um, we, you know, Joanne, what we should do, the three of us, at some point, we should all decide to meet up. Track at, him down. Uh, track him down. Track track I knew you were going to go to Monica. <laughs> See? Okay, when I just said that, mid-20s, I, I was actually leaving you out of that, Monica. You're, like, not human, okay? <laughs> She's not human. <laughs> Uh, but I still love to do my sprints. I still, I still do yeah, them. Um, yeah. You know, that's why I'm saying we should all find a track meet and say, let's prep for this track meet somewhere and, and meet up and I just go have some fun. <clears throat> like, yeah. I don't know. Wouldn't that be fun? So, oh, you know, just add something to add to our schedule. You know, we don't have <laughs> throw it in the schedule. Throw it in the, throw it in the schedule, Monica. <laughs> put it on the schedule. Oh my so, God. Yeah, so, so that was like the mid 80s. And then, um, I competed, competed, did really well as an amateur, won the world, won the British, won the um, Europe, did, did, traveled all over the world. The <laughs> as, as a Europe, as, as, as an amateur, as an amateur, as an amateur. Yeah, so. That's it was, impressive though. But I, I was, we were talking about it. So I was an amateur for a long time because it took for, you know, I had to win the overall British, which I tried many times to win. Otherwise, I didn't turn pro. Only one person a year turned pro. So I was an amateur wait, for a long time. Wait, wait, say that again. Say that sentence again, Joanne. Because Wendy's Only like one person a year turned pro. One female and one male a year. You had yeah. to win your weight class and then you had to win the overall to get your pro card. So one person a year. Good um, days. That's how but it should because be. of that, I, I got to travel everywhere with being a, um, an amateur. It was good yeah. because if I had to turn pro earlier, I would have missed all the experience of being an amateur yeah. like everywhere. And you know, yeah. I won a lot of shows and it felt really good. And then I turned right. pro and I didn't win anything ever again. And <laughs> you know what, I mean? what were your favorite? Okay, because this is this is something that some of the like newer generation, um, I would love for them to like hear this and like appreciate it. But like what were the what were your favorite moments and favorite like lessons that you learned by being an amateur and fighting through for so long before getting your pro card? Well, for one, it's the camaraderie. You knew yeah. you knew who was going to different shows, and yeah. you knew who was there. And then your whole gym would go. Like in England, they'd rent a coach, and everybody from the gym would go to your show. Oh, you know? that's awesome! And because you're amateur, you'd get, you're, even in America, you'd be local, and people could, you know, um, people could go to local shows. So you had this yeah. whole support, and you just, yeah. you know, and then you'd end up doing the same show like year after year yeah. after year after yeah. year because you weren't turning pro, right? So. You got, you know, the promote. It was just a really, really fun, like more intimate. Really, yeah. oh my gosh, it was really fun being an amateur in the sport. It really was. Yeah, yeah. it really was. And then I, yeah. turned, then I turned pro. I think that was oh, know, back, ninety-one. Yeah. Back then, like more, I, I don't know if more just random people, maybe not people that just were um, watching people compete, like that knew someone on stage with. Was it more like the community would come out even if they didn't know somebody on stage, Joanne? Or well, the whole it... gym would go. The whole Edward, the whole gym would go. They'd organize That's it. Awesome. Gym, the gym owners would like, hey, the show's on. Everyone's do -do -do -do. and yeah. everybody would go. You know, you just have dope bloke from the gym that just worked out, and everybody would go. It was <laughs> so much fun. So it was, yeah. it was very different. Um, and I'm glad I was amateur for that for that long because. Um, you, well, for one, you get to do really well. You know, if you if you're good in the sport and you're moving up, 
you get to win a lot of shows and experience yeah. a lot and you go up the ladder so it's yeah. really good to go up a ladder it's great to get to the top of it but it's really good to go up the ladder it's yeah that, you know too, that creates the foundation it creates the experiences and then the education piece of it too which i know yeah. oh, you, all the time you're, you're learning well, and you're learning and you're learning this this is like a this is something that i have really noticed a lot over the years of just observing people who go to the straight to the top and they tend to quit a lot sooner because when you've already experienced that it takes away that whole section that you were just talking about and it's really difficult to go from here and then go from here and have to fight your way back up it really deflates people and i feel like a lot of the confidence is built in that in that journey you know in that climb oh, you know having to like totally. lose and go up and lose and go like there's so much built there you know it's it's and the hard lessons to you learn that. It took me 10 years to figure out my diet. It took me 10 years to figure out what actually worked. If I had to turn yeah. pro after two years, I wouldn't have had a clue what I would. I mean, it takes yeah. a long time. Somebody can write your diet and do all that, but it takes a long time to figure out your body. It you does. know, yeah. um, it takes a long, I, long time. I feel like I'm just not figuring it out. And I've been at this since 2008. And I'm I like I'm just now going, oh my gosh, like I'm learning so many things now that I just look back, like, I mean, 10 years ago, and I'm like, I had no clue this, this, and this. I mean, I really do truly feel after all this time, I'm just figuring things out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And we can continue learning, and then we get older, and, you know, different chapters of our life bring new lessons, and, and that's learning as well, you know? Yeah. Um, so, Joanne, just to kind of touch on this, because I always like to find out from my um, guests about kind of like their family dynamics were, were your parents in uh encouraging you in sports and then bodybuilding or were they like what are you doing this is crazy like how did they influence you um one way or the other or did they i come from i come from a really really great family cookie cutter family right they're all in england i go to see them tomorrow um my i, I think my mom was like what on what i mean <laughs> i mean it was a new sport nobody even knew it existed yeah um, my dad used to be a powerlifter, so he always thought it was really cool. Um, yeah. I remember winning the junior British. So I was 21. I, I eventually, because it took me three years to win the junior British. So I won the junior British, and I came off stage, and my dad was just like, I am so proud of you, John. I love you, I'm so proud of you. And then I remember winning the overall British when I got my pro card, and my mom and dad were there, and I was, how old was I? Well, I was 24 when I got my uh, my pro card. Is that right? I don't know. Maybe like maybe older. I forget. Whatever. Um, yeah. And my parents were in the audience, but I hadn't seen them for a while because I was I was living in a different part of the country. And I went up to see my mom, and she looked at me, and she just burst into tears. She just burst, and not in a good way. She was just oh. like, "Oh my!" Because I was like a screaming skull. I was just oh, like, "Oh God!" <laughs> and my mom just like burst. <laughs> We all oh. get that way though when we're dieted down. Mom, it's only for today. It's only for today. Yeah, oh, it's God. crazy. Yeah, the diet face is real. Like, you know, the first diet I ever I did. Um, so I'm 17 years old, and the, the the guy that owned the gym he gave me this diet, and it was um, 800 calories. Oh, and I was oh. I was 17 years old, and I was built like a boot. I was like I was built like a boot lace. I mean, I was a skinny kid that was had managed to put some muscle on. 800 and this is I'm not blaming him here. I think this is all we knew back then. Like yeah. 800 calories for three months, and he said, "And if you can eat less, do it." That's what he said to me. Wow, yeah. that is such a guy thing to do in the 80s. <laughs> I did it once, once. I did it. Oh I did it once. man. That's right. Maybe I'm not going to listen to that, but it's not his fault. That's just what people really didn't that's, really that's understand the diet, you know. Culture, okay. actually, you know, yeah. like a, yeah, it yeah. was definitely not like culturally established. I won't say accepted because I don't think that it was really. I mean, you're like a, you know, you're paving the way for a lot of other women and doing this. Not like women just weren't really building muscle back then, and so no, men, no, you know, what do we do with women? Like, what are we supposed to do? Like, I don't think that. Women you are meant know. to be thin, so make them do this, right? And yeah, and I and I think there was the, the knowledge at the time that you know 800 calories seemed like you know plenty of calories for women because people didn't have the the same level of knowledge that they have today. So it wasn't even like a misogynistic thing. It was it was just oh, where no. we were with the culture. So not criticizing him. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, totally. And then by the time I was doing the Olympias, I think I was eating 2,800 calories for my shows and um, with 50% carbs. And that's what, and, I, and now you see, now what I know now, I wouldn't do that diet either for my shows now. I could have looked, looked so much better if I didn't know. But anyway, that's what I was doing back then. Well, what would you do calories. now? I would do much lower carb and I would do carb timing. I would, yeah, I, yeah, instead yeah. of carbs with every meal, I would, I would do carb timing. I would, I, Okay. Um, utilize them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it's, uh, it's the timing of them and the transportation of them. I would now I know more about that. Um, I wouldn't have had to do so much cardio. Uh, but, <laughs> although I didn't do that, I really didn't do that much cardio. Really, you know, not not crazy like the stories I hear now. Hi everyone, Monica here. Just wanted to thank you so much for watching the Monica Brandt Show and don't forget to subscribe, uh, like, share these videos and oh yeah, and that little bell notification, don't forget to click that so you'll get more great content every time there's a show uploaded or a video or anything else. So you guys, thank you so much for your support and as always, stay fit and love life.